Planet Dolan. What kind of animal had babies out of its mouth? What extinct animal was cloned and brought back to life in 2003? From Ice Age creatures to more recent extinctions, here are 14 animals that could be brought back from extinction, and one that can't. Hey everyone, my name is Melissa. I'm here to caress your brain cells with weird facts from all over the world. Number 15. The passenger pigeon was once a fixture in the eastern United States. Widespread hunting and deforestation in the 1800s caused their numbers to go into a rapid decline. The last wild passenger pigeon was thought to have been shot in 1901, and the last captive specimen died in 1914. Number 14. The ground sloth isn't a single animal, but rather a large subgroup of mammals that lived until about 3 or 4,000 years ago. Unlike the three sloths you're used to seeing, ground sloths were gigantic. Some of them got to be more than 5 tons, 6 meters long, and 15 feet tall. In other words, they were bigger than an African bull elephant. Number 13. The most famous recently extinct animal is obviously one of the ones scientists are most interested in bringing back to life. The dodo was endemic to only one place on the Earth, the island of Mauritius, an island used by Portuguese and Dutch sailors as a stopover. A combination of hunting and introduced species from ships meant that the dodo had predators for the first time and was driven to extinction in the late 1600s before they had a chance to adapt. Number 12. The woolly mammoth is another animal scientists are anxious to resurrect. The plan is to identify the genomes responsible for allowing cold weather survival of mammoths and adapt them to Asian elephants. They could be instrumental to creating sustainable subarctic grasslands in the tundras of northern Russia and Canada. Number 11. And speaking of large woolly mammals, the woolly rhinoceros is another Ice Age creature that could make a comeback. In 2015, scientists were able to find a preserved 10,000-year-old specimen and actually reconstruct it via taxidermy. It appeared to have died at 7 months old, but was already as big as modern fully grown rhinos and had bright red hair. Number 10. The baiji is one of two animals on this list that may not be completely extinct. That's why the push to resurrect them is so strong. These river dolphins are native only to the Yangtze River in China, where they have lived for around 20 million years. But in the last 10 years, they've been declared functionally extinct. The last reported sighting of a baiji was in 2016, and even that one is unconfirmed. If they still exist, they won't for long. Number 9. The Irish elk goes by another, way more interesting name, with all due respect to Ireland. It's known as the giant deer. Despite having the build of a deer, it stood around 7 feet tall at the shoulder and had antlers measuring as much as 12 feet across and weighing up to 88 pounds. They've been extinct for around 7,700 years. Number 8. So you're probably wondering why we haven't addressed the obvious candidate for de-extinction, the dinosaurs. And it has to do with what de-extinction actually is. It's not as simple as just cloning dead animals. The process involves splicing DNA from extinct animals into that of similar species. For example, editing the genomes of the woolly mammoth into an elephant, creating a sort of elephant-mammoth hybrid that can be selectively bred and genetically edited further to more closely resemble the mammoth. Problem is, that this process requires both a living, current animal that would make a good hybrid, and DNA samples that are less than a million years old. Dinosaurs have neither, and thus our current method of de-extinction wouldn't work on them. Number 7. Moas are a group of several giant birds that lived in New Zealand until about a thousand years ago. Much like the dodo, they were driven to extinction because they had few natural predators in their habitat. So, with the introduction of humans and the animals they brought with them, their numbers dwindled quickly. The largest moas could reach up to nearly 12 feet high, making them the largest birds ever known to exist. Number 6. The Tasmanian tiger has thought to be extinct for nearly a century, but many have held out hope that there are still some specimens to be found in the wild. Searches have found some clues, but nothing substantial. Despite being called a tiger, it has more in common with dogs than cats. And even still, it was actually a marsupial and had no real relation to either cats or dogs. Number 5. And here's where the big ethical question comes in. You know by now that the de-extinction process involves some complicated genetic splicing of an existing species with the DNA from a related extinct species. Obviously, the closest remaining relative to the Neanderthal is us humans. In theory, we have the ability to create a Neanderthal-like creature from recovered DNA and existing human DNA. Doing so would allow us to study our genetic predecessors in new ways, and perhaps even discover the missing evolutionary link between us and apes. But 
Should we? Scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Number four. Only two species of these bizarre frogs were ever known to exist, and both became extinct in the mid-1980s. But what makes this frog unique is their reproduction style. The female frog would swallow fertilized eggs, converting its stomach into a womb, and then birth its offspring out of its mouth. And scientists at the University of New South Wales have successfully reactivated this frog's DNA and created a living embryo. So, resurrection of this bizarre species is possible. Number three. Some sort of saber-toothed cat might be the closest we can ever actually get to resurrecting the dinosaurs. Not because the cats are dinosaurs themselves, but because some form of them existed around 55 million years ago. They went extinct around 11,000 years ago, but the modern-day tigers and lions have a number of similarities that could make them perfect for a de-extinction project. Number 2. Until 1918, there was a species of parrot that was native to North America. The Carolina parakeet used to live throughout the United States, from New York to Colorado. Hunting and deforestation drove them to extinction, and it's not clear if the same species could be reintroduced to North America without running into the same problems. But the technology and the existing species of parrots and parakeets exist to try, even if they were to be reintroduced into a more hospitable area. Number 1. The Pyrenean Ibex is an extinct species of goat native to the Pyrenees in southwestern Europe. But they're especially relevant to the discussion of de-extinction because it's the one species that has actually had a living, breathing specimen get resurrected. On July 30th, 2003, a living Ibex was born from a surrogate goat mother. Because of a lung defect, it lived only for seven minutes, but it proved that the de-extinction process is possible. And if it was possible for the Ibex in 2003, it's possible for any of the species we've talked about, except for the dinosaurs. What? Don't you don't. Did you know that we have a countdown book featuring some of our best scripts on sale now? Links down below for the physical and ebook versions. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Thank you.